from PRX. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, friends beyond the binary, it's time for the podcaster who, you know, I, I, the, the brings you a podcast. The, you say, what would be a, what would it be a podcast about rivers? If it was all, this would be actually an interesting podcast tributaries, uh, a podcast about the parts of rivers, you know, the windy parts that, uh, not the main river, but the parts that are, you know, river, I guess, uh, tributaries were river adjacent, probably, if Scoots, you know, the tri- tributary, I love saying that, tributaries were river adjacent, just so you know. And you say, no, you're not, you're connected directly to the river, Scoots, uh, and it's, I guess, it's time for the podcast for the po- from a podcaster who's not exactly sure what adjacent means when using it with rivers and tributaries. I could, or, you know, some things I say, well, I'm th- like, uh, maybe I don't know what it means at all. And maybe that's a good thing because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Hey, everybody, before we get started here, Sleep With Me exists uh, from a place of empathy and compassion of saying, I'm going to be here for you to keep you company so that you can fall asleep. And when I say that, I say that as a part of multiple communities, and there's a lot of communities and members of our communities that need support right now. And there's links to resources, whether you need extra support right now or you want to be a part of positive change and say Black Lives Matter with your actions, say stop AAPI hate with your actions or just learn more uh, there's links to resources you could connect with in our show notes because you're a part of this community okay so make sure to check out the show notes in your podcast app of choice and here's uh, the sponsors who enable me to be here for you free twice a week all right everybody scoots here and i have a question that i've asked before why would anyone support a free podcast right who would pay for a free podcast and i've always had my theories i thought i said well it's because the podcast works and the work that goes into the podcast is what makes it work but that really i'm like wait a second that makes it about me and it's really about you you know the show is about you getting the support you need and i'm checking in with patrons who do pay for a free free podcast because then I said oh well they say well it keeps me company it makes me feel less lonely I'm happy to pay for a podcast I benefit from those are some of the things I hear from patrons but I want to hear from you if you, you're like well I've never I'm not sure about paying for a free podcast go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron think about becoming a patron if you're in a position to do so you can listen to the podcast on a regular basis and you want to pay for what you get out of the podcast uh, whether it's five ten or twenty dollars a month. Uh, take a look at what we offer because uh, some people do it for the benefits. Story only episodes at $5 a month, all intro episodes at $10 a month, compilations, all night episodes at $10 a month, and then Ray episodes, Great British Bake Off bonus shows at $20 a month. And, and trying to figure out, is it more about the feelings? You, you, because you feel good, you feel like a rebel paying for something you benefit from, or is it the tangible goods? You say, oh boy, I get this all this extra audio. In the $10 and $20 feed, there's over 2,000 things to listen to. So I guess it comes down to you, because I am looking to get more listeners supporting the show on a monthly basis. That's one of the ways we're here for you. So think about it, check it out, and then let me know. Say, Scoots, now, if you did this, I might become a patron. Or, oh yeah, I didn't realize how good it feels to be a rebel with the cause. And you can see all that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash P-A-T-R-O-N. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. Sleep With Me is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And, you know, throughout May and June and all summer long, Sleep With Me is proud to join the cause of destigmatizing therapy. So if you're having a tough time with relationships, you're having difficulty sleeping, difficulty meeting your goals, if you're feeling anxious or stressed, BetterHelp counselors can listen and help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own 
trained, licensed professional therapists. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. And BetterHelp's therapists have a broad range of expertise that might not be locally available in your area. It's available for clients worldwide. And it's so easy. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your counselor. You could schedule weekly video, phone, or even live chat sessions. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. I've heard from listeners that have utilized it. I know people in my personal life that have utilized BetterHelp. And it's just taking that step. And I know the flexibility and the ease of use with BetterHelp has started to expose more and more people that I have regular contact with uh, to online therapy. So many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And Sleep With Me listeners can get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. You have to use our link to get that discount. That's betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. BetterHelp. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash sleepwithme. That's right, everybody. Better help. Thanks, everybody. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Have you tried the Name Your Price tool yet? It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast where I pop my peas. And if you could hear me, I, it would be ple- something I get mixed up because it's where I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors, amplified their support by letting the sponsors know they heard about them on the podcast uh, or shared it on social media because I appreciate it so much, all that extra effort, taking that extra step. And I want to thank Cindy, who got an all-form love seat and chase in a chair all from all form sofa let all form know about it let me know about it thank you so much cindy if you support a sponsor go to sleep with me podcast.com slash sponsors let me know about it let the sponsor know about it on social media and i can try to thank you here on the sleepy supporter zone and you might even get something extra so let me know about it uh that's the first part of the sleepy supporter zone thank you cindy the second part of the sleepy supporter zone is you getting the support you need Need. There's links to organizations that you could connect with if you have extra needs right now in the show notes. So if you need a little extra help right now, just open the show notes to your podcast app and, and take that next step. Please, you are worth it. And it's also about supporting the members of our community with our actions, being a part of positive change so that the steps we take say Black Lives Matter, say stop AAPI hate, so that we're taking care of the members of our community. There's links to resources that you could connect with in the show notes. And I also want to hear about more resources, about more organizations you're connecting with. So let me know through our website. Uh, Let me know what organizations you're supporting and that you connect with. And I can make them part of my personal supporter zone. Uh, That's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Posty Poster Zone. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Lecture. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Run, 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 run. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Lois, Hannah, like banana. Leah does the transcripts. 
Thanks, Mr. Bard. I'm at Dearest Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you can find me. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing? Trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do as a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever's keeping you awake. Could be thoughts, you know, things on your mind. Could be feelings, uh, something like so things about the past, present, or future, or emotions related to thoughts, emotions that are just there. Emotions, your feelings, uh, physical sensations, uh, or it could be something else. It could be changes in time, temperature, schedule, someone else's schedule, you know, like whatever you get to changing. It could be humidity. I mean, it definitely, there's a high percentage of chance uh, sometimes parts of the year it could be humidity related. Uh, maybe sometimes it, you don't even like it, that would be like something you say, well, I didn't even realize that. Uh, it gives me another you know, something else to think about. Uh, but what percentage of humidity is in my place uh, when it's not humid? But it, to check that, what is it? But it's all, is it always humid? Most places, it uh, depends on how you define humid. Uh, well, that's a great thing to wonder about later. Hopefully I'll come back to that, because I'm sure there is a standard. Of course, probably they say, well, in the U.S., you picked your own standard. Everywhere else in the world, yes, it's a base one. We measure it with a metric system, just so you know. Except, you know, we're like uh, in the the empire. They have the imper- You have the imperialist system, the colonialist system, and the rest of the world uses a metric system. I'm just being lighthearted, but I bet, and they say, yeah, everywhere else, this is how we measure humidity. That's not a barometer, right? Barometer measures barometric pressure. Holy cow, my brain just remembered something on the first try. Oh, sorry, though, I'm here doing an intro for a sleep podcast. So let me uh, refocus. So whatever is keeping you awake, I'd like to take your mind off of that. What Barometric pressure... That could be something uh, that you say, well, yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling that barometric pressure. I'm sure some people are sensitive to that. And I'm not even kidding either. I mean, you hear those things about people saying, you know, their, their body parts are, they say, well, you know, winds are coming soon. I could feel it in my elbow. Is that why you're dipping your elbow in milk? No, that's because that person on the sleep podcast invented that as a way of self-soothing. And then he even said, yeah, don't, don't throw out your cereal milk. Well, one, most people drink it, but two, I'll dip my elbow in it later. You say, Pop, no. If you want to live with us, uh, you can't do that because then you just leave. There's bowls of uncovered milk in the fr- cereal milk in the refrigerator. No, that's elbow milk uh, for dipping elbows. It's, a bit, it's so good. And you can f- everybody can feel good about it when you dip your elbows in. Uh, and they say, is that why you started doing yoga pop? Because you were, yep, I wanted to be able to do a downward dog into uh, dipping my kneecaps uh, into milk. And yeah, you can use a milk alternative, of course. Uh, but why pop? Because, th- like, uh, well... Because it feels nice, uh, the, but it got on my ro- Okay, well, you're right. We do have to work towards a solution. I understand that I got some milk on your rug, and uh, I apologize. Wow, we just had a breakthrough here live on what was supposed to be the— Oh, so what am I going to try to do? How did— el- el- I mean, elbow milk has come up on this podcast before. Was that a solution that came up for barometric, if you're feeling pressured by the barometrics? Uh, what if that's like, uh, well, that could be someone, like you say, well, that yeah, that was my life with, uh, you know, a third-rate glam rock band. Pressured by the barometrics, you know, it was all about peer pressure from the barometrics. So, okay, so where where am I here? 
Oh, whatever's keeping me like a minute, take your mind off that. I'm going to try to create a safe place. Yo, did you see that? That was a kind of safe place. There was a, I guess that's somewhere in my mind. There is a, it sounds like a, a like a, a, a daughter and a father thing. Maybe my mind working out future, my subconscious trying to work out future problems. Then like 10 years from now, they'll tell me those things at night. And I won't, I say, I don't need this for another 20 years or 30 years. I say, well, let's start thinking about it right now because we've been processing it for 10 years. But whatever's keeping me awake, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Oh, these tones are creaky. Oh, so creaky are these tones. And some people say, why are they creaky? Or a lot of reviews lately have said, yeah, I didn't really think... Uh, I don't know why the creaky dulcet, and neither do I. That's what I would say. They work uh, because, uh, I don't know, there is something. Here's a, here's a, whoa, boy, we're going to go way far afield. So if you're new, if you're a regular listener, you're in for a real factoid. Like, because listeners love when I reveal stuff. And this is something I haven't talked about. So if you're a regular listener, uh, I'm going to go on a tangent and then I'll try to introduce the podcast. But this is what happens anyway, every single episode. And this is not backed up by science. But so I used to have this way I would self-soothe. So regular listeners or new listeners. Uh, and it's indirectly related to creaky dulcet tones. But it comes from the same vibration that I can feel and hopefully you could feel in your ears right now. Where I'm trying to comfort you. And it's almost like trying to create a, a, a audio safe place that has this physical aspect. I mean, that's one of my goals, right? And I did have this way of self-soothing in my poor roommates, because it was particularly if I had um, back in my day when I was out there, as they say, and I was imbibing too much, particularly, though I would do it when, even when I wasn't imbibing too much, but only if I did not feel good. And I would do the same vibration right now that I'm using the creaky dulcet tones. Uh, you could feel that, right? That vibration right there. But I would just make noises, which I can't do it be like now. You could email me and I'll try to record something. Just because if I do it right now and then someone's listening to episode after episode and they hear me kind of groaning. Like, it's a bit like that, though. That would be the closest I could do without it being, you know, waking somebody up. And they say, what is that? Why is Scooter groaning? And I used to do that in bed. My roommate, Chris, he was my roommate for three different years. This poor, poor, poor young man, a great person. He was the one that had to deal with it the most, and I would lie there, and I'd like sometimes, and it would just soothe me, particularly if I had too much to drink, and and then I started not feeling good, or if I had so much that I was like full limbic, like I was, I don't know what full limbic means, but I was so relaxed, I would just make this noise, uh, or if times, other times, I did not feel good, and it wasn't just a groaning; it, it was like something much more uh, subconscious even though I was aware of it, not like a groan. A groan comes from more of your upper palate. This comes from the creaky dulcet zone, which is in the back of the throat. Uh, in the, Like, you can feel it, right? Uh, and it's comforting. So that's kind of where, like, when, like the counterintuitiveness of the creaky dulcet tones is. The creaky dulcet tones you could feel. That's the main thing. I want you to feel something like comfort or distraction. So, I don't know, I could talk about it more at some point, but uh, anyway, the new listeners, sorry, that was a little little behind the BTS, as they say, uh, but not, you know, BTS, you know, the, the super group, uh, or the group that's super. Okay, so if you're new, a couple things to know. One, you've already figured this out, though. This podcast is very different, and it is not for everybody. But please give it a few tries for your sake, uh, not for mine. Like, I only want you to listen if the podcast is going to work for you. But the majority of people's experience is it takes two or three tries and you say, oh, okay, I get the creaky dog. I get that I don't listen to him. 
So see how it goes. But if you're skeptical or doubtful, that makes total sense. Or even if you're like, I don't think I like this, uh, but I'm not sure yet. Just see how it goes. So that's that. Um, what else? Oh, so give it a few tries. It doesn't work for everybody. I hope it works for you. It's a podcast you don't really listen to. You just kind of barely pay attention. So you say, hmm, okay. Uh, just like that, you just like other times where you could get called out for pretending to listen. Here, you just kind of actively do it. You say, holy cow, I just went full creaky. I think I over-creaked my creaky dulcets. So you could just, um, you say, uh-huh, okay, mm-hmm. Yeah, so you groaned in bed, eh? Mm-hmm, wow. So just kind of pretend to listen. Also, this podcast does not really put you to sleep. It's more here to keep you company as you fall asleep versus putting you to sleep, which is why the shows are over an hour. So you don't have any attention. You say, oh, they're over an hour. I got plenty of time to fall asleep. Oh, I don't have to worry about it. And if I can't sleep, Scoots is going to be there to keep me company. That's really my job, to keep you company as you fall asleep. Or if you can't sleep or if you wake up, I'm here. There's plenty of people that listen that aren't asleep right now. And they're here with us, kind of sitting around, feeling those creaky dulcets. So they're keeping us company too, which is pretty nice. Or we're keeping one another company across the deep dark night, across the globe. There is this strange solidarity. That's why I call it the deep dark night. So whether you're awake or asleep, that's the other important thing is, is, is yeah, if you can't sleep, I'm here. If you can and you're not listening, I'm here for you to not listen to. Great little deal. So it's a podcast that doesn't put you to sleep. You don't really listen to it. So just tell us the good parts. Well, let me tell you more of the stuff that's harder to get used to. Other than that, that we're already 10 minutes in the show, which it goes into the structure of the show, which also can evoke really strong feelings, particularly with regular podcast listeners, because it doesn't follow a normal structure. Show starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So everybody's welcome. Kind of like a greeter that says, hey, come on in. We're glad you're here. Then there's business. Oh, then there's stuff to support listeners. Then there's business. So that's kind of interdependent stuff. I want to support you. And the show needs support to stay free. So there's business. That takes about six minutes or so maybe eight or whatever, then there's somewhere around 14 to 24 minutes of me introducing the podcast in the introduction. As you hear here, where I go off topic and go on tangents or, you know, think about humidity and never go back to it, uh, and then explain what creaky dulcet tones are and then try to explain what the podcast is. And so for a new person or some person that doesn't like the intro, I mean, the good thing is you could just skip the intro or most of it. If you start to show 20 minutes, you might have to listen to a few minutes of intro and business. But you get to do that for free. Or your patrons, a couple thousand patrons, uh, listen to all intro or all story-only episodes. Believe it or not, though, there's, just, there's even more patrons that listen to store so intro-only episodes. So if you're new, just kind of the, the main reason is to try it out is to kind of see how it goes. But, oh, the reason the intro goes on and on and on is because I don't know if you're like a lot of the listeners, like 2% skip the intro. But for most people, we need a way to ease into bedtime and get some distance and quiet things down so that we can get to sleep. If it was as simple as closing a door or turning a switch, you might not be listening to this podcast anyway. And so the intro serves as a be, to be a part of your bed town, bed town, bed town routine, your bed down, your wind down routine or your bed down routine. So if you're getting ready for bed or you're in bed or you're doing something calming and comforting, it could be part of that routine. And part of that routine is you're drifting away slowly. Uh, yeah, so to get some distance uh, from whatever keeps you awake uh, and kind of almost to sneak into bedtime in, in some sense, you know, to sneak you past those threshold guardians that, that at least for me, that keep, get in the way. So that's why the intro really goes on and on and on. Is it just what we've seen work over time is, uh, 
this little method. And then it, it really becomes something a lot of people grow out of listening to the podcast in this beautiful way because they built a bedtime routine with Sleep With Me. And then they realize, oh, the, the other parts of my bedtime routine work just fine. Now I know Sleep With Me will be there if I have something going on, but otherwise I don't need it anymore. And I mean, that for me, gr- listeners graduating from the show, like, that's awesome. And I know that, you know, just like, uh, you know, everybody, there's seasons of life. So maybe they'll come back. Maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just tell somebody else about it. It's not a big deal. I'm here to help you and keep you company uh, when you while you need it. So that's why the intro goes on and on and on. But, yeah, if you have strong feelings about it, again, just see how it goes because— it really serves a purpose, and the purpose is to, to give you some distance from daytime and bedtime, and then the business is to keep it free. So, yeah, then after the intro is more business. That's just how podcast structure works. Then there'll be a story, and it would be a real treat. we got Bernie the Butterfly coming by to tell us a story uh, with a pretty long setup, but like a little bit of, a little bit of story, a whole lot of setup. Uh, about a water strider and a lily pad, which seems to be Bernie's kind of favorite subject matter as of late. So that'll be nice. And then there's thank yous at the end. So that's the structure of the show. The other thing to know that's important is that you are important. The reason I make the show is because you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place to respite where you could get a little bit of space and a little break. Uh, and that's why I make the show is uh, because our world would be a better place if your world's a better place. Even if, you you know, ideally you get into a place where you're flourishing, but if you just get a little rest, it's going to be a little bit nicer. And the other reason is because I know how it feels on the other side when it's not so nice and it's tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep. I got all those uh, thoughts, feelings, physical sensations. So, would, would I, like, uh, for me to help you, when I know how it feels in, in, in the deep, dark night, the feelings and all that, uh, it's my honor. So I think that's it. I'm glad you're here. I really hope I, I, I can help you. I really work hard. I yearn and I strive. I, again, I hope I can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And when your hand hits the fridge, fridge tomorrow, remember, here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring this podcast to you twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Have you tried the Name Your Price tool yet? It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody. Scoots here. Now, tonight we have a guest episode, guest coming on the uh, uh, podcast. Uh, and it's been a little while since he was on the podcast. The last time he kind of snuck on the podcast, he went undercover and started to tell a story. And then it ended up it, like it was it wasn't what we thought. It was, and it ended up being a beautiful story. So I said, Bernie, why don't you come back? Why don't you do another story? Uh, but it, it does need some setup, especially for new listeners or for people who haven't listened in a while, or maybe just missed all the other Bernie the Butterfly episodes. So Bernie the Butterfly is a frequent guest uh, on the well, yes, yeah, as, as frequent as we have guests which is, you know, once or twice a year. Uh, I know Bernie, like, actually Bernie doesn't want to be on the podcast any more than that. He's one of the few guests that says, no thanks. Uh, so Bernie the Butterfly is a butterfly. A, I mean, I guess technically you'd say more, much more than a butterfly. Like the, the most, I mean, the only butterfly that I know of uh, that's achieved full sentience, uh, lived, uh, like, been around since 2013, can speak and uh, and so much more. So probably some sort of I want I want to say a spiritual butterfly, but he's a butterfly with spirit. And a couple other things to you know, Bernie. Uh, he's a bit like a cab driver. He sounds like a cab driver. Uh, 
that you would see in an old New York New York movie in the 1960s or 70s. Uh, he does not. He's not a super fan of humans, though he does like some humans. And uh, like humans uh, overall, Bernie uh, is fed up. And what triggered it was so Bernie's always lived near me. Well, now lives with has lived with me. I mean, on me in the sense of uh, like a house guest that never leaves. Uh, but when I first met Bernie, Bernie was a butterfly out flying around. And somehow we got into a discussion about LeVar Burton uh, and read, mostly reading Rainbow and Butterfly, can fly, I Can Fly Twice as High. And when Bernie heard about that, uh, that's how our friendship started because Bernie wasn't happy about that. He said, like, uh, he, doesn't, he didn't like that concept. He thought we were talking bad about butterflies. In some sense, Bernie, I mean, in, in indirectly is calling us, you know, to a greater uh, awareness and involvement in certain, you know, positive causes uh, to take care of our wonderful planet, Mother Earth. Uh, but he does it in a different way. And also at some point, this is the only thing I got to explain through, uh, just, I, I think I explained it one other time, just to help Bernie Bernie became a fan of boy. Bernie loves a few things: boy bands and Gatorade or sport drinks. Now, some people might think this is a joke, but when you say, "Well, if those are your two loves, which is most? Which of those two loves is most healthy for a butterfly to consume in copious amounts on a regular daily basis, even when you live a scooter?" And I'd say, boy, even I would say boy bands, uh, because, you know, you can't have, butterflies can't, Gatorade and sport drink in moderation. So, but Bernie, does, so Bernie is a big fan of uh, boy bands, not you, not there's anything wrong with U.S. based boy bands, but no, so far, uh, Bernie's love has, uh, I, I forget, oh, but one second of summer is five seconds of summer. And this is not meant as a joke or a dig on any five. Like I get, I do get all that mixed up. Uh, so I don't know if Harry. I don't think Harry. I think Harry Styles is not in any of those bands. Uh, oh, I just thought of their names. There's Green Hair. I know that's the drummer of Five Seconds of Summer. And Callum, he's like the bad boy. And then there's the two dreamy ones, Ashton. Ashton maybe. Luke, Luke, Luke Hemmings. Is Luke Hemmings, is that somebody in a boy band? It sounds like it. I think Luke Hemmings might be in, but Harry Styles is not in Five Seconds of Summer. Uh, maybe I'll, I guess I should look that up. But Bernie's current love, just like the world's current love in 2020, late 2020, is BTS. That's capital B, capital T, capital S. And even I, like, can't resist it, uh... So, you know, that's, uh, so BTS is a seven member South Korean boy band that formed in 2010, debuted in 2013. I guess that means they're a septet. Uh, they went from hip hop to kind of a wider range of genres. I don't know if they'll have a holiday album out in 2020 or they already did, but they also have personal and social commentary. They touch on themes of mental health. This is from Wikipedia. And they're just, they are, I mean, they really are great. Uh, uh, let's see. They debuted in 2013, Too Cool for School, uh, then Dark and Wild, then Wake Up, then Wings, uh, Let's see. This year, oh, that's why the main reason was that today they were nominated for a Grammy. So, congratulations, BTS. I mean, that's news. Like, today's the day. That's why Bernie's, that's really why, like, uh, they said today's a great day for Bernie to record. Love Yourself World Tour. They sold out Wembley Stadium, highest grossing engagement in Rose Bowl Stadium history. Uh, they've partnered with UNICEF uh, on the Love Myself campaign. They address the United Nations, the 73rd and the 75th General Assemblies. 
I think that's, let's see, let's see what impact and influence other than, I'm sure that Bernie doesn't get any credit, but I mean, they're, I mean, they're big time. So impact and influence, uh, easily the biggest and most successful name in K-pop. They, oh, one of the reasons is they were on uh, the 2019 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And that's when Bernie became a B- BTS super fan. Uh, yeah, they're only second on streaming to Drake. Um, biggest boy band in the world. Uh, most influential people. So just, I mean, really, they are inspirational. I'm not, I'm not, I'm serious. And I think it's great. I, like, I, and I, I, I like, uh, you know, Bernie has headphones now, so, uh, or I wear headphones. So I, it's not like I get overexposed to it. So that's BTS. I guess I could look up five seconds of summer just for, uh, just a clear, like, oh, let's look up Harry Styles first. Is Harry Styles? Yeah, Watermelon Sugar. Harry Styles. S-T. Oh, no, it's, yeah, S-T, not S-Y. Harry Styles, English singer and songwriter. So he was a solo compat- contestant on The X Factor. Oh, he's in One Direction. See, I, I, I said that's what I thought, but then I said, no, One Direction's from, like, the 90s, Scoots, uh, but yeah, no, Harry's from One Direction. Let me just see who else is in One Direction so I don't get that mixed up. Uh, oh, Liam N- N- Nile, Louis, like Liam. And, okay, so oh, Zane was in One Direction? Wow, learning a lot today. I think five seconds of summer is with the number five. Five seconds. Yep, they're Australian. Oh, it is. Luke Hemmings is the rhythm guitarist and lead vocalist. Michael Clifford, he's who uh, 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 Bernie calls Green Hair. No, no, the drummer. Callum, yeah, bassist Callum. Oh, Michael Clifford, it says, is the lead guitarist. Uh, and then Ashton Irwin, who I think Bernie has like a... Wow, I'm looking at a picture of them um, from 2019. They don't look... Uh, the same as I remember them. They got a new look going. At least in two hundred like uh so they're men they're now men. I mean they're they're not a boy band. But anyway, so five seconds of summer, uh oh but Bernie ha- I think Ashton's the one I don't know, there's some tension in Bernie's mind between Luke and Ashton of who's the the uh the real lead of the band and who's going to have, you know, the solo career. And I think Bernie falls on Ashton's side because Ashton's like less, uh, maybe it's a Luke though. I don't know, but this is going to be a story. So I'm going to try to keep Bernie. Uh, so without further ado, I guess, uh, I'd like to present our tonight's storyteller telling a fictional story and not, uh, just going through a list of merch of BTS or anything. Uh, Bernie the Butterfly. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. This is Bernie the Butterfly, and uh, good to be in your ears here. And no, I'm here to tell, tell you a story, because I know that 2020, you know, Bernie, like, uh, this is when we're recording it, just a little behind the scenes, BTS Bernie style. Behind the scenes, yeah, BBTS, it's Bernie behind the scenes. We're recording this in late 2020, but you'll be hearing this in 2021, so I hope you're having a great year. And I'm really appreciative of uh, all's, all's his views, uh, listening to me, and I haven't been on the show in quite a while, but when we did that, I had a nice little, uh, we had a nice little time. So I thought I'd tell you, thanks to Scooter, he kind of set me up here is the story of, uh, well, it's a story about a lily pad. I like telling stories about lily pads because he, here's the thing, butterflies, uh, you know, there's dragonflies. And even though dragonflies really aren't, bo- well, here's an, another, I don't want to get my wings wet. So that's one because it's not, not a thing. I mean, we can get our wings wet. Believe me, don't tell the scientists, don't lose, keep, keep it to yourselves. Deal with your own stuff. I don't need to hear about you. 
correcting me from your bio lab, saying, oh, Bernie, by the way, the wing rigidity of, uh, I realize the, the facts. I'm talking about my experience as a butterfly. Now, I don't, I, I do speak for all butterflies and Mother Nature, uh, but that was a series I used to do. Mother Nature Talks Back, boom, I used to do those, those episodes when I was much more uh, agitated. But now I've learned the healing power of music and dreamy eyes, and uh, it really has changed me uh, and, and made me more thoughtful in how I get what I want. I mean, you say, oh, Bernie, you sound like a chicken. No, 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 I'm just more deliberate uh, and more measured because, it, you know, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather, I'm neither burning out nor fading away, just in case you had that on your calendar. But, you know, especially those of you who say, Bernie, actually, there's a butterfly, species of butterfly that loves willow lily pads. Also, they're uh, technically no. I say, okay, thank you, thank you. Why don't you uh, bring your mother her breakfast already? So I forgot what I was talking about. I guess I did get a little off topic there because I got a little uh, growly. You know, I've been on the podcast now since uh, the 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 14, 2014, I think, maybe even twenty thirteen. I was here before Ray, just so you know. Scooter actually had put Ray on the podcast to balance out my attitude. Uh, but yeah, I'm here to tell you a story, a story about a lily pad and a water strider. And you could either go by the lily pad and the water strider or the lily pad and the, wa- the water strider who needed, needed a break over here. Or just I needed a break uh, because this is a, a famous tale. And I wanted to start it somewhere where you wouldn't expect it. In a world uh, where, you know, dreams come true. And I want you to pic- picture uh, the, the kind of the, the picturesque end of the story or a part of the story where you're going to feel really good about it. Uh, but you'll also wonder, how in the heck? So I want you to picture a vase or a vase over there sitting on a table, right? A beautiful vase. Uh, now, this vase, you say, whoa, is it a speckly? Is it a... No, no, no. It's a clear vase. Over there. You know, uh, it's a beautiful because of what's inside of it. Uh, and the vase could be whatever shape you want. Go ahead. What shape did you pick? Oh, boy. Typical human picking that kind of shape. You got to... You know, we got to... Oh, boy. But no, good job. I'm just kidding you. I'm just joshing you, whatever that means. But so there's a beautiful vase, a clear vase on the table. Oh, well, let's start with the table first. Tablecloth, a simple red and white uh, checkered pattern like you'd see at a restaurant. Uh, and then you have your vase. The vase has water in it, but the water is a healthy color, not perfectly clear because there's roots in there. And there's green stuff, and there's a little bit of mossy, algic action in a good way. Though you say, well, that looks like healthy water to me. It's clear, but it's not clear at the same time. And it's clear there's something living in there. And there's probably some good nutrients in that water. Maybe in the future there'd there'd even be a... uh, Hey, uh, what do you call it over there? Uh, what, what is that thing called? A fish or something? I don't know about that. But you know, a little vase that's a bi- the vase that's a biome coming to Bernie's stories in the future, twenty twenty two. Look out! But as the vase rises and you see you following its roots, and then you're saying, "Whoa, is that a stem?" What is that beautiful thing attached to the roots? There's roots coming out of it, but then it becomes much more efficient as it rises uh, up through the water and heads to the surface where it meets, what do you say? Oh my goodness, a lily pad there. And you may say, Bernie, at the bottom of the, uh, what's at the bottom of the vase or the vase? And I'd say, whatever you wish. Maybe there's some muck down there, or I don't know. Uh, because then you say, "Wow, there's a lily pad in the vase, Ooh, and, and not just any like a, not just any lily pad, the lily pad from this story." Uh, for convenience, it just happens to be named Lily, the lily pad. 
and it's in that vase of that vase, and it's but it calls it its house uh, currently, and it's sitting there on a table there. And also, then you move your, you say, whoa, boy, who would have thought that? Usually people put flowers in a vase. Uh, and you say, is that a self-sustained uh, lily pad environment? I'd say, well, no, no, with good care. It has to be taken care of. You got to watch the friggin' uh, sun. You got to watch the temperature over there. You got to talk to the, now this lily pad, I don't got to talk to it because uh, you look to your right over there. And you see, not far. Uh, well, first off, you see, whoa, boy, I want to move to the right to the next thing you're trying to expose me to, Bernie. But uh, what I'm noticing is that a flick of candlelight? Uh, what is it? And I say, well, it's, it's like one of those. L- now, this was a great, you know, you humans, sometimes you can't do much right. I mean, I, I don't want to point any fingers because I don't have any. But, you know, you're always up to stuff. But this this thing, and, and finally, now, you humans aren't aware of it because you haven't quite got there yet. But the scientists with LEDs and the you know, solid state and the randomization, let Scooter know about this when you see this product. Because only I know about it because, I'm you know, I'm, I'm more advanced than a lot of you. But... Uh, Finally, the scientists in, in to some point in 2020, 2021, unveiled the, the finally a, a LED candle that it doesn't isn't just just okay. That's been the pinnacle of LED candles, and I know this because Scooter was big into them for his daughter's nightlights. And I just want to review a quick history. Oh, by the way, BTS, uh, thank, congratulations on your Grammy which you'll be getting. If you don't get it, believe me, Bernie will not be happy. Grammy, you would have a board. And thank you for, for keep, keep in making 2020 something that for me, you know, was very, like I was able to listen to you and uh, feel connected uh, to the world. Uh, and also K-pop stands, as they call you. You know, thanks for being active in the world. You've done a lot of good. You you uh, have, you, you know, you remind me a bit of Chuck Tingle in the sense of, uh, you know, you, 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 you're being uh, f- f- fun and disruptive at the same time in a good way. Subversive, I guess I'd say. So thank you, K-pop uh, BTS fans and, 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 uh, and K-pop everywhere. Anyway, sorry about that. So finally... These so the okay so let me talk about great advancements in these LED candles. First, you had your ones that were votives or whatever, and those have probably gone through a few things. But that's pretty good. You say, well, we're doing pretty good. It looks like a little votive, uh, and you say, okay, we'll fix the warmth so it feels warm. And you did that, and then you said, make it look like a candle. You did that, and then some people said, we'll make something. Uh, that flickers like a, a fl- so some people put those pieces of plastic in there then you surrounded it in wax uh, like a, a pillar candle i said whoa boy you humans you're doing good and then you got kind of off track no offense but you said well let's add a remote control and multicolors and all this kind of stuff so we could get the highest rating on the, the website uh and we'll add programmable, but, but, but we could make. And I said, "What do you think I'm buying a friggin' pillar candle for? To be purple or green? I mean, Scooter likes that stuff, but I see he says, uh, "Hmm, and we really? Get, I'm looking for a candle-like experience over here." So I said, uh, "What the heck, humans? Get what are you? You getting distracted by multicolor LEDs?" Uh, and then they said, well, we put in a program here to uh, simulate candle. And I said, well, hello, I'm a butterfly. I can notice the thing loops after 15 seconds. It goes, blank, you know, flicker, 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 flicker. And then it repeats. And I said, that's not randomization like a candle over, you know, you, you need billions of possibilities if you're going to be, if you're going to be a, a candle alternative in my book over here but at some point they got it right uh, and that's what i was here to tell you is that uh sitting on this table that's what you're seeing because you can't kiss it you could say 
Don't put a candle on a table with a lily pad in a vase. You, you know, it's just not going to—too many possibilities over there. I mean, we already had to figure out gluing. Well, we didn't glue it. We used to—oh, boy, this is another advancement. Like, uh, uh, because, well, that's part of the story. But this but this candle is not part of the story, uh, because they said— uh, Oh, so finally they got a candle that looks like a real candle. So that's what you see in flickering, uh, flickering over there is on, on the glass of the vase of our friend Lily the Lily Pad. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know. Uh, I was just thinking, I wonder if there's any BTS themed pillar candles. I don't know if I'd want that because then I'd need one of each of them. And I guess I wouldn't be, I'd be, do, well, maybe not, though. Like, because uh, I'd say, oh, boy, uh, like, uh, you, uh, your eyes are even more dreamy. Anyway, so, okay, no BTS. Uh, but, oh, by the way, what is playing in the background but BTS music, though, uh, that the lily pad seems to be enjoying? By candlelight, but what makes candlelight more enjoyable but uh, someone to enjoy it with? And who is there but in another uh, vase? And now this one is, I guess you'd say it's more like a glass uh, cylinder. It's at the exact same height uh, as the vase uh, that, that uh, so it could be, you could consider it a giant vase. But it's a circle, which a cylinder, which it has a circle at the end. You know, bottom end is sealed because it's full of water. And this water's also murky, like it could hold a lily pad. Uh, but oh boy, on the water is a water strider. Name, we'll call this water strider stridey because that's my favorite name for water striders. Uh, and, 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 you know, friends of mine that are water striders, which these two happen to be my close friends. And it's just stridey's just striding around. Uh, and uh, so that's where that's kind of where the story kind of comes to a close. I wanted to tell you that up front. They're enjoying each other's company now okay so there's a little bit more to it than that but like uh, i guess maybe i'll tell you that you know how we got there is an important part and that's really the ending you should be focused on not anything else related to it so just just so you know in your head that's a happy moment a lily pad and a strider together by candlelight uh now you say, Bernie, as I start to bring it more in focus, I notice that's an alley. It looks like it's an alley out the back of like a theater or a restaurant or something. And I'd say, okay, well, let's just start off with how did we get here? Well, once upon a time, there was a lily pad named Lily and a water strider named Stridey. And there was a lot of lily pads and a lot of water striders in this here, like a uh, tributary of a river, which you could would mistakenly be called a swamp by somebody like Scooter. And I'd say, no, 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 this is a tributary of a river, okay? It may be a little swampy, but get, don't get it twisted. So, oh boy, it was this, now this was picturesque, uh, but there was a couple things, uh, that uh, you should know is that uh, now this one lily pad, Lily, you know, happy enough lily pad, uh, you know, interacting with the other lily pads, producing chlorophyll, you know, the whole nine yards. But it was also something about being a lily pad that uh, your life is kind of planned out. You say, well, I'm anchored here. And I'm supposed to grow a flower and a stamen and a pistol and all that. And that's what they tell me at school. And they say, don't ask too many questions because we'll, adults will blush. Uh, but that's your destiny as a lily pad. So just keep it up. Uh, hopefully you're, you've, uh, you know, grown into soil and you'll get the right nutrients and no friggin' boat run by a human will come by and uh, muck it all up. But Lily, you know, she always said sigh. That's, uh, you know, is this all there is to it? It's just being a lily pad. Now, at the same time, there was a water strider named Stridey. 
And uh, Stride, he was one of many water striders out there, striding around, striding uh, stridey stuff. Uh, but again, locked in this uh, dance uh, that Stride didn't necessarily feel Stride had full control over, called the, the you know, the, the circle of biology, you know, the intrinsic whatever, uh, Darwin type stuff. Uh, but, you know, Stridey, and this wasn't something, this was something that Stridey kind of felt a yearning inside to say, well, I don't know about it. I like, I like striding around. Uh, and one time Stridey started going down the same tributary that Lily was on and striding around there and saying, oh, boy, at some point, you know, my system's going to go and then I'm going to have to find another stride, to, you know, stride create or whatever. And is that all there just is, is just striding around until I get to be able to stride my stuff? Uh, and Stridey really liked, uh, Stridey found uh, Stridey self-distracted by looking at lily pads just floating there on the water, the way the sun hit them, the way the water at different, you know, when it was moving, the way the wind would ripple across them in the water. Even, you know, when Stridey was out, when Stridey wasn't supposed to be at night, uh, the way the moon and the rippling and the reflecting and even the temperature would affect these lily pads. And Stridey said, oh boy, I like striding around lily pads and looking at them. And, you know, Stridey would get an earful from the other, you know, the, the, the lily pads, or the uh, stride assist, you know, the other water striders. They said, this, what are you doing over there? You're supposed to be over here with the available, you know, mates. Uh, You've got to protect your, you know, protect, perfect your striding technique, uh, Stridey. And, you know, Stridey was over there. Now, what, one thing, well, I thought, let me tell you about Lily. Now, Lily was the same. Lily said, wow, oh, boy. You know what things make being a lily pad pretty good? The feeling of the wind, the feeling of the sun, the feeling of the water on me. But also all these different things I get to look at, uh, and holy cow, biologists just save it. I don't need to hear. One, water striders can't hear. B, lily pads can't see. It'd say, well, you spend your lifetime in a swamp, and then, you know, after 30 years, send me a, send me the same message, please. Uh, so L Lily also started to notice uh, the dragonflies, uh, and even the people, you know, of course, also on a, you know, subconscious level being like, are these friggin' humans going to, you know, what are they doing in the a party boat? Uh, can you keep your cans of uh, sparkling water on your boat and your gator? Oh, boy. Gatorade. They say it's a thirst aid, but it's so much more. The, you know, they once said that you have a deep down body thirst. I have that all the time. But Scooter says butterflies can't drink uh, Gatorade. Anyway, I'm back. So, uh, so, uh, so then, then it's, I was just thinking, I just said, a little Gatorade in, it was, you know, sports aid or Kirk, I know I do have a taste for Kirk, Kirkland signature. It's pretty darn good. See, I had to sign it with my signature. I'll tell you that much. Uh, they said, Bernie, what'd you want to do before you go? And I'd say, well, like you like to uh, go to go to Kirk, which state is Kirkland in? Because I'd like to go there and enjoy all of the things. Uh, okay, so Lily was there, and then Lily's eye got caught by Stridey. She watching Stridey glide across the water, run across the water. Not even just that, the tension of the water in each of Stridey's legs. Uh, the subtle motion, the it, would, it just enchanted, uh, it enchanted Lily so much. But there was all like you would say, well, what is it about Lily, or what is it about Stridey, that uh, was different? Because there was lots of other lily pads and water striders in this tributary of a river, and not a swamp over here. 
And I would say it just to point it out in an obvious way, because, you know, what, 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 you know, I we could get to the point is uh, there's two things. Uh, and uh, one is maybe they sense something similar and different in one another. And maybe there was something forlorn in each of their hearts uh, that sang to one another. Also, the part now it just happened to be uh, because I was there. That, like the reason I'm telling you the story is because I was friggin' there. But also because uh, every time they happened, it just happened to be that every time they saw on one another on a Bluetooth speaker, not that far away, it happened to be PTS was playing. And music, you know, has a power, and it affects us, and maybe it affects us on a subconscious level, but water striders, and uh, it definitely does, uh, water striders and lily pants. And so, uh, uh, because that might have been just one of the things they couldn't identify, that I'm just telling you straight up front, uh, so as you, you know, uh, that could have been happening over there. So, uh, okay, so so they, they started to get to know one another. And then one time, Stridey, you know, was circling. I don't know, you started to get feelings. So like, you know, when you have feelings, but you don't know, you, 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 you just know the feeling spot. You have no, you, like, kind of like a crush, more of an interest than a crush, I'd say. So Stridey would spend more time swimming around Lily and Lily would spend more time fee, fee, like w enjoying Stridey's movements, but also something about Lily. Uh, Lily became more aware of uh, being Lily and enjoying. Uh, and I'd say I don't know about John Berger over there, but Lily was like felt the sun more and and all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, like, uh, all said to say is, like, they started spending more and more time around one another. And also, you know, there was, like, uh, like something growing. Like, uh, and it was a, a doubt. You know, the, the, we don't, the, you've seen these movies before. You know, Stridey goes home. And they say, what are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. blah. You know, you get it's not the way we told you to go. This isn't, you know, this isn't how water striders do it. Uh, that's not your territory. And Lily, you know, th that's, uh, the Lily Pads are like still a community, but the messages are exchanged in a different way. But the same message, what do you, you know, but when, when are you going to grow that flower? Well, you know, You've got plenty of nutrients. Uh, look at all the other lily pads that get swept away. What are you doing just lying there all day looking at water striders? Uh, don't you think we notice uh, that kind of stuff? Uh, and, you know, when that's going on, sometimes you just need a friggin' break. You say, holy cow, I need a friggin' break. Now, these are, these are not uh, as advanced as a butterfly, also, it just happened to be, now maybe it was some mentor-type figure over there that would play that sweet, sweet sounds of uh, BTS, uh, sometimes on, most of the time on shuffle. And one day, Stridey said to Stridey self, you know what, I need a break over here. I do, uh, so I'm going to take a little break. Uh, and Stridey uh, took a break, and Stridey got off... Uh, and said, uh, "Hey, do you mind if I sit down on your little, you, 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 like uh, over here? Uh, I need a little break uh, from being a striding." And again, these are conversations we've all heard. Well, they said, "Oh, why? why uh, you, of course." Uh, and then they said, "How you doing? I'm Stridey. I'm friggin' Lily. How you? Nice to meet you. I noticed you striding. I noticed you uh, chlorophylling." Pretty nice. Yeah, I like the looks of you, you know, uh, Leaf or whatever. Well, it's who I am, not a Leaf. Uh, well, I like you striding. Well, it's just what I was born to striding. That's what I was born to do. Uh, I'm about to later after I get a little rest over here. It's, uh, so, yeah, so Lily said, yeah, this is pretty nice. Uh, like, I kind of feel like I'm having a rest by you resting on me. And uh, Stridey said, wow. And then this is said, what do you think this becomes a regular thing? I come over here, maybe I'll even take a nap. Uh, 
And they didn't, still didn't notice it at the time that the music was playing. Just, and you say, wow, this, and I, now, okay, you say, well, Bernie, maybe you watch too many movies. Now you're trying to make a movie in, in real life with a real life water strider and, a, and I'd say, oh, I guess apparently I was, uh, apparently I was, caught me bringing love to water striders and lilies and breaks, excuse me, and the love of music. So eventually it became a regular thing. And then, you know, yada ying, yada yo, you know how it goes. And then all the patriarchs and know-it-alls and uh, a fish, you know, Darwin is the Darwinists and all those things. Mother, you know, not Mother Nature, Mother Nature School over there. That's why I say Mother Nature. But there's the people that think they speak for Mother Nature. What are you doing? You're not striding enough. Well, how are you going to find a mate? Where's your flower? How come you haven't flown? You know, you, you, you know, you don't got a pistol or a stamen. You got to grow because you're you're not you're thinking about a water strider and the beauty of the world and listening to mu- music. Uh, and then one day, uh, you know, they, they they said they would just encourage them, just so you know, parents in Scooter, because I know you got a teen now, so you better be on the lookout. The more you try to stop this stuff, uh, cut it out, I'd say. Maybe be supportive and listen. If you would have listened, maybe you would have learned something over there. But so, uh, you know, I was listening. I was listening with them. I was watching them. So one day I took a little trip over there in a little rope. It was so cute. You'd say, Bernie, what's the cutest thing you ever did? Well, I made Scooter buy me a rowboat. It was a Barbie rowboat. And then I made him reinforce it with styrofoam. It was pink. It was gorgeous. uh, And I could row it. It worked. uh, And it actually was big enough uh, that I, he said, you don't want a a Barbie yacht? I found one in a dumpster. I said, no, no, the rowboat's fine. Just put that little shower speaker in there. And for a while, you know, I would go around them and they got to know me. I got to know them. I said, well, hey, kids, uh, how you doing? Uh, And they said, what's that giant round thing? I said, a shower speaker. What's a shower? Oh, boy. So we got to know one another. We talked a lot. But, you know, just about stuff, not about stuff. Uh, and then one day I said, huh, did you both uh, sigh in a way that sounds like your hearts are heavy or something over here? And they said, we did. And I said, well, I know I couldn't help but notice it. Uh, and they said, notice what? And I said, well, just like BTS sings about all, all the things they talk about. And they said, what's been? And I said, uh, you know, whatever, self-discovery, love, uh, confusion, being young, not being easy, uh, true, you know, parental stuff, you know, whatever, you, all that stuff, uh, striding, that's what you were born to do. Maybe more, though, maybe more than just being a like a lily pad, eh? And they said, yeah, but that's all it is. Uh, so we're just trying to make the most of uh, the time we have together. And Bernie said, you know, I said, wow, wow, sounds like you, it sounds like you got a problem. You gave up on solving. That doesn't sound like something BTS would do. And they said, what's BTS again? I said, anyway, it sounds like you got a problem. And they said, well, they didn't realize. So then that took a week or two. I said, well, here's the thing. I don't like freaking getting my wings wet. Do you think I just never can't? I, I got this, I forced Scooter to get me this. And they said, what's Scooter? So that was another week went by. And I said, listen, anyway, once I laid the groundwork, which was exhausting, I didn't realize it at the time. I thought I had, I said, uh, listen, sounds like you got a problem. I got a problem too. We could solve them together. That's how, that's, isn't that how nature works? Interdependent systems or some such thing? And they said, well, what's the problem? And I said, well, you know, as much as I know about BTS, I'd like to go backstage uh, to a show, but that's not going to happen. So I want to go back, I want to get into the hearts of BTS, not just, I, originally I just wanted to go backstage to the concert, uh, but then I've never worked out because 20, friggin' 2020, you know? And so now I want to be in the hearts of BTS. Uh, and they said, 
we don't understand. I said, oh, but like, don't worry about that. I said, I want the two of you. I'm going to get to the heart of BTS by, by giving you two what you want. Uh, and they said, what's that? And I said, well, here's the thing. Uh, I'm going to like, uh, like, uh, I said, it, it's going to take a little while, but one day I said, what if we took a little trip, all, all of us together, we relocated and they said, we don't know. And I, I said, okay, another week gone by. Stridey, you really don't need much. You know, I, you know, again, I'll make Scooter figure out what you eat. Uh, we won't, we won't ever give you any Gatorade. Don't worry. And, uh, you know, there's this thing called, and I didn't even, I said, don't worry about it, but Scooter will figure all out the hard parts. I'm going to do the, the bossing around, and the, I'm the idea man. But basically what we're going to do is we'll relocate you from this tributary of a river and not a swamp, Scooter. And uh, we're going to take you out, and uh, we're going to give you a new home where you're together. And... Uh, you know, it won't be easy. That'll even make you identify with BTS because you're going to be homesick. I'll just be honest with you. And it'll be new and it'll be different uh, and all of that. Uh, it'll be an experience, though, you have together. And you'll have me, of course, which would be nice. And we'll have music, you know, not just BTS. I'll mix it up. Don't worry. And again, we'll make sure the biology is figured out uh, to the best of our ability hopefully, because if it doesn't get, if we don't get it right, I got to find another water strider and lily pad that are kind of in like uh, having feelings for one another or something else that symbolizes uh, what's good in the world, which the two of you do, no offense. I mean, not to be too serious, but really you're both beautiful beings. And I just want to solve your problem so I could get in the good graces of BTS. So that's where the, the mechanics of it, what, what happened was that Scooter went and got, you know, Scooter had to do all the work, figure out, uh, is there a responsible way to relocate a lily pad? Uh, and then he said, Bernie, you know how much the money, th he goes, I don't have any, like, uh, and I said, Scooter, I don't want to hear about it. Uh, also, I didn't tell him the truth. Also, I said, uh, Scooter, you realize Bernie, you know, has reached a stage in life, uh, where, you know, it's time, I, I, and he said, what? And I said, yeah, it's, it, I, I, uh, I said, I have, because uh, he said, that river's going to, he said, Bernie, that swamp freezes over. I said, it's a tributary of a river. And I said, Do you, have you met my son, Stridey? This is how Scooter is. Uh, he's my early, like my first son. It was not like uh, met my child, Stridey. Have you met Stridey? And Scooter said, he looks like a button off your eye or whatever. And I said, by the way, this lily pads holds the rest of my youth, the future youth. Uh, so I did, wasn't totally honest. Uh, and he said, well, just what should I do? And I said, the lily pad and the youth are fused as one. And then he said, when I see that on Google, I don't see anything about that. Uh, and I said, just figure out how to get the, fr like, uh, and he said, this looks like a water strider. And I said, Scooter, it is, okay? It's just my comfort str strider, uh, like for birthing. So that's really, because you see, that's how I got Scooter motivated to, to do it all and, and, and to spend the money. Because he said, I can't just, uh, I don't know anything about this. So we got the water. So then we put we put them in various uh, things, you know, pot, like mostly like buckets are good. Uh, and again, you got to keep the temperature. You got to keep an eye on all this. Uh, and for a while, we had them in a bucket together, and they were happy. Uh, and they got to see things that water striders and lily pads don't necessarily see, like uh, like scooter driving all the way back across the country uh, with uh, with them. And then they got. And then they said. Uh, but meanwhile, my brain was thinking. I said. What is the symbol of uh, goodness in the world? And uh, I said, well, it's just simple. Like, uh, and I said, would uh, then he, so basically once we got them, then we then now we had to figure out a couple other important things. So one, the freaking candle thing, 
but I, you know, I could, a scooter can't make a big candle. So we figured that out. Then we said, okay, when you're dealing with scooter, you always got to plan around this, this stuff. So we also had to figure out, uh, like, uh, so we, I said, so basically the, well, I'll tell you the idea at the end, I guess this is the end, but, uh, with scooters, very clumsy. So we also had to use magnets at the bottom of each vase, uh, and the tabletop, uh, so that if the table and also like a heavy table, like, uh, like, so you couldn't be knocked over by scooter, uh, like with very dense wood but like a bistro table and then magnets on the tabletop and then magnets on the bottom, you know, opposite poles. Uh, so that when you put the vases on the tabletop in between the, you know, tablecloth was in between it, uh, they would stick there. Also, it was like a kind of acrylic glass or something that's not breakable. And, uh, also they had like temporary tops we could put on them so that, uh, and normally we wouldn't transport them. Well, actually that became their homes. So, like, uh, this, so then what I said to them is, uh, now I'm going to, now it's time for date night. And then uh, like, uh, like, uh, and I, you know, I put up a movie for them. And it, so, so every night, uh, what I've been trying to do now, I don't have this, uh, no one could see this but BTS, so don't ask me for this. And you, BTS can't see that the, that Stridey, now Stridey will move around because like, there's music time. And uh, then, the like, so Stridey, like, li, like Lily likes to watch Stridey stride. Also, I feed them or, like, gener, you know, distribute the nutrients over there. And then uh, they uh, then all I do is uh, they they do a live stream that hopefully BTS will watch at some point. And I say you know the, like uh, I keep changing the title. I keep thinking if I get the title right, uh, uh, but like I, now I call it the water strider that needed a break, and it's just those two. Like a very I, I don't feel like it's Zen, but it's really good to look at for them. I hope. Uh, so, and then I, and then I say, by Bernie, the butterfly, to find out more, can, you know, contact me to the artist known as Bernie, the butterfly over here. And, uh, then I, uh, yeah. So then, and also I thought, well, should I play BTS music? But then YouTube will friggin' take me down. So, and I tried a humming BTS music, uh, but yeah, so, uh, that's the story of the water strider that needed a break and Lily, the lily pad. Uh, and when you hear me, when you hear them thanking me during the Grammy speech, uh, which would be in the past and now probably over here, you'll be like, that's how Bernie did it. He get brought peace, uh, and beauty. And that's why they came out with that concept album called, uh, the water strider that needed a break or the, you know, it could be I feel like that's more open than, than something less obvious over there. All right. Thanks everybody. This is Barney the butterfly saying good night. All right. I want to just uh, thank everybody who became a patron recently. Uh, Maggie, Michael, and Jen. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Amy, Nicole, and Alex. Uh, thank you. Thanks. 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 And good night. Ellen, Amanda, and Sharon, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Judith, Joel, and uh, Aaliyah, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Chris, Kylie, and Vada, thanks, 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 and good night. Claire, Nicholas, and Taryn, thanks, 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 and good night. Barry, Anonymous, and Georgia, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Pat, Emily, and Mr. Tinkerbell, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Josanne, Deborah and Jasmine, thanks, 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 and good night. Justin, Aiden, and Tiana, thanks, 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 and good night. Alex, Sally, and Brad, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Yasmin, Heather, and Conan, thanks, 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 and good night. Me, Drake, and Elizabeth, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Emma, Ian, and Emily, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Ben, Jay and Shaheen, thanks, 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 and good night. Caitlin, Meredith, and Betsy, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. 
Carl, Harker, and Grace. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Good night. Uh, thanks everybody for supporting the show. Uh, Sleeping Me is a, exists a free podcast because the people that support the show directly on Patreon, support our sponsors, or get our merch, which now we have our Sleep Phones merch store up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. And you can still use the, the promo code sleep with me uh, to save five bucks there too. On most orders, I think you have to order over a certain, like, 40 bucks or something. But uh, so that's uh, something to do to support the show. Another free way to support the show is uh, just to spread the word and let people know about the podcast uh, and or podcasts in general. So, hey, thanks so much and good night. Hey, everybody, before uh, the episode, like, uh, or after that, I'm here after the episode saying, hey, uh, if you get a lot out of the podcast and you say, well, Scoots, I want a free way to support the show. A free way to support the podcast is to go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. You can earn cool audio rewards. You could even win a set of sleep phones. Uh, but it's just a great way to support the show. Bring new listeners on. You just share your special link on social media and you get new people to sign up for the show it's a huge help for the podcast and uh, you get some sweet rewards it's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer sleepwithmepodcast.com slash r-e-f-e-r thanks everybody and good night